Netherlands. Taking it to the top, South Korea prepares to lodge a complaint with the WTO about Japan's export curbs on tech-related products. Seoul also secures US sympathy for its plight, but Tokyo is standing firm, insisting its actions are on the level. Samsung Electronics reportedly secures emergency supplies of the three materials Japan has restricted. It means Samsung's production shouldn't be hit too badly, at least for the time being. Plus, South Korea's ongoing domination of the LPGA. Kim Se-young wins the Marathon LPGA Classic in Ohio, ending the tournament with a stunning 22 under par. Our top story this morning, one of President Moon Jae-in's most trusted advisers is back from Washington, where he discussed with his American counterparts Japan's controversial new trade curbs on South Korea. He said on Sunday he thinks... He fully achieved his goals, but for now, Japan's restrictions, they do remain in force. Our Lee Sung Jae starts us off. Returning from his four-day visit to the U.S. capital on Sunday, Kim Yeon-jung, the deputy chief of Chongwade's National Security Office, said he adequately achieved the goal of his visit to Washington. Upon his arrival at Incheon International Airport, Kim said he explained the unfairness of Japan's measures, adding that American officials sympathize with the latest events and their effect on the U.S. as well. The U.S. now has a good understanding of our stance. They're also worried about how this might impact the global supply chain related to chips and displays and damage U.S. companies. Kim further expressed hope that Washington would be able to relay the situation to Tokyo and will continue to work hard to prevent trilateral ties falling apart. However, despite the U.S. calling for a trilateral vice ministerial level meeting last Friday, Japan spurned the offer, citing scheduled conflicts, despite South Korea agreeing to hold the talks. Kim says Seoul and Washington are open to hold talks at any time, but Tokyo is refusing to negotiate. Sources say the U.S. was greatly disappointed with Japan's attitude, adding Washington also sees it as a problem that Tokyo flatly turned down an offer for dialogue. Lee seung Arirang News. Now, Samsung Electronics has reportedly secured emergency supplies of the three key materials affected by Japan's latest export curbs. Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong convened a meeting with top executives over the weekend following his six-day business trip to Japan, where he met with related government officials, uh, company officials rather. While the exact amount of the emergency stockpiles is unknown at this point, sources say they should relieve Samsung's situation for now, averting a possible production crisis. South Korea is bringing the issue of Japan's tightened controls on key semiconductor material uh, exports to Seoul to a big World Trade Organization meeting that's set for next week. While Seoul will insist Tokyo's move is purely politically motivated, Japan plans to argue its measures do not violate WTO regulations. Kim Hyo-sun with the details. The WTO is set to discuss Japan's decision to tighten curbs on high-tech material exports to South Korea. This comes as Seoul requested the issue be dealt with during next week's WTO General Council, the organization's highest decision-making body. Seoul's Commerce Ministry said Sunday that it aims to call for the immediate withdrawal of the measures. It also plans to underscore how they could negatively affect global trade, just as it did during last week's meeting of the WTO Council for Trade in Goods. Japanese media forecast tensions could persist for the time being. Tokyo's Asahi Shimbun has criticized Japan's trade curbs, saying they harm Japanese firms as well. But Japan's Nihon Geijai Shimbun predicts Tokyo will likely argue the measures are based on legitimate security concerns. It also pointed out the wide gap between Seoul and Tokyo. 
The newspaper also explained Tokyo sees the dispute could be turned into a prolonged spat, taking into account the possibility of South Korea suing Japan at the WTO. It says it could take over a year until a final verdict is handed down. Kim Yo-san, Arirang News. A slew of reports by the UN Security Council show Japan has exported prohibited items to North Korea in breach of international sanctions. This comes amid Tokyo's baseless accusations that it's Seoul which is not complying with UN sanctions on Pyongyang. Kan hyung with more. In 2016, a UN panel of experts reported commercial radar antennas made by a Japanese company were spotted on North Korea's naval vessels. It's just one of multiple cases reported by the UN panel of experts where restricted items, including strategic equipment and luxury goods, have been shipped to North Korea from Japan since 2008, despite the international sanctions that ban such exports. In the 2015 and 2016 reports, the panel of experts confirmed some parts manufactured by Japan were used in North Korea's unmanned aerial vehicles found in South Korea's Paju, Samchok, and Pengyongdo Island. Other reports show Japan also exported luxury goods to North Korea between 2008 and 2009, including Mercedes-Benz and Lexus vehicles, cigarettes, drinks, and pianos. Despite this clear cut of evidence of violations, Japan has been accusing South Korea of exporting Japanese-made industrial materials to the north, but UN reports do not show any apparent cases of Seoul violating the sanctions. On Sunday, South Korean lawmaker Ha Taekyung of the minor opposition Parumire party said there's a possibility Japanese products could have been shipped to North Korea and used by the regime to develop nuclear weapons. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Even more Japanese products could have gone to North Korea through the international black market. Citing a 2009 report in the Japanese newspaper Sankei Shinmun, the lawmakers said Japanese firms exported parts necessary for the development of nuclear weapons or related research. Kan Young-woo, Arirang News. Former acting CIA chief Michael Morell says a nuclear freeze by North Korea would be a logical next step in the denuclearization process. In an op-ed to the Washington Post on Sunday, Morell highlighted the positive aspects of a possible nuclear freeze, namely enhanced credibility and the possibility of partial sanctions relief, including the resumption of the inter-Korean Kaesong industrial complex. However, he noted a nuclear freeze could never be an end goal of the denuclearization negotiations. He also added a nuclear freeze would be meaningless without the regime reporting all its nuclear materials and long-range missile production facilities, as well as granting unfettered access to international inspectors. Now in sports, South Korea's Kim Se-young has won the Marathon LPGA Classic. She did so on Sunday, ending the tournament on a staggering 22 under par, 262. Entering the final round at Highland Meadows Golf Club in Ohio with a one-stroke lead over American Lexi Thompson, Kim managed birdies on four of the first nine holes to pull ahead. This is Kim's second victory on the tour this season and her ninth tour title overall. With the win, she took home the 260,000 US dollar winner's check. Now, just a handful of international artists have performed in Saudi Arabia, including the Black Eyed Peas and Rihanna. But K-pop group BTS will become the first international band ever to hold a solo stadium concert in the kingdom. With the group currently on a world tour, BTS's management agency said on Sunday that the seven-member boy band will hold their first Saudi Arabia concert at the King Faid International Stadium on October 11th. 
While South Korea's Super Junior previously performed in Saudi Arabia, BTS will be the first group to have the entire stadium to themselves. The concert has been added to the group's Love Yourself, Speak Yourself World Stadium Tour. Now, a recent video of a Korean man beating his Vietnamese wife has gone viral here in South Korea, and the public reaction was natural, sheer repulsion and anger toward the man. South Koreans have long been aware of uh, how susceptible foreign women are to domestic violence in South Korea and how many course, uh, cases actually go unreported. But this latest case brought the cruelty and horror of the situation into their front rooms in the most visceral way. Our Oh Soo Young tells us more. For four in ten women who've come to Korea for marriage, the marital bliss soon turns into domestic violence. But according to Korea's Human Rights Commission, one third of them neither seek help nor report the abuse. Why don't these women speak out? A Vietnamese woman in her early 30s agreed to talk to Arirang News on the condition of anonymity. My husband has been beating me since 2010. He also aborted my baby while I was unconscious. I slit my wrist to kill myself, but I failed. Now I'm trying to get a divorce, but it's hard to leave because he says he'll hire someone to kill me. I don't speak enough Korean, and if I go back to Vietnam, I will be a nuisance to my parents. I want to stay and work here. For many like her, it's not as simple as leaving. Divorce means they lose the right to remain in Korea unless they take the case to court or have a child with Korean citizenship. Foreign women rely on their husbands to meet the requirements for settlement or permanent residence. If they separate, they must prove that the Korean spouse is to blame for the divorce. But that's extremely difficult, as many don't report cases of abuse. Women with children are also disadvantaged, as the court grants custody to the parent who has more capacity to support them. Over the past two decades, Korea has been expanding support centers, legal consultations and emergency hotlines in 13 languages for migrant women. We receive about a thousand calls a month, and one-fifth of them are about domestic violence. We've had urgent cases where women called us after being stabbed or bitten almost to death because they can't communicate in Korean. Another large proportion ask about divorce and right to remain in the country. Serious cases are immediately taken to the police, and the victims can seek shelter in 28 safe houses for migrant women where they receive medical and emotional therapy as well as job training. Around 1,000 women are currently living in these shelters, where they can stay for up to two years. But without the legal clearance to remain in the country, their position remains precarious. The Supreme Court last week ruled in favour of a migrant woman, saying her right to stay in Korea should be extended, even if her ex-husband isn't completely to blame for the divorce. The move has been largely welcomed, but observers say more should be done. The government said last week that it will discuss measures to improve laws to better protect migrant women and their human rights and tackle the negative social and cultural conditions that set them back. Oh Soo Young, Arirang News. Now, with fine dust emerging as one of the country's biggest concerns, more and more companies here in South Korea are going green to minimise their carbon footprint and their emissions. Process innovation and new systems are helping them conserve energy, reduce pollution and boost productivity all at the same time. Yoon Jong-min reports. In the modern era, companies not only focus on generating profits but protecting the natural environment as well. An auto parts maker in Pyeongtaek, Gyeonggi-do province, is one of the many firms that are now going green. Last month, its plan was given an award by Korea's environment minister for its efforts to reduce the creation of harmful substances. The plant invented a new automated welding machine to conserve materials used in the production process. It also adopted an automated waste management system to safely handle and minimize wastewater. An energy storage system is used to save up energy overnight so that it can be used during the daytime hours. Since the plant adopted these eco-friendly techniques, its productivity has risen 32 percent, while energy consumption decreased by 12 percent compared to 2010. 
Since we adopted the eco-friendly system, output increased in our plant while energy usage decreased. Also, we were able to reduce our amount of pollutant emissions. Eco-friendly management and innovation not just profits are becoming more important for sustainable development. By awarding businesses with the Green Company label, we plan to raise social responsibility in the corporate sector. Other companies that have been recognized as green firms include Korea Midland Power Incheon Branch, Korea Southern Power Busan Branch, Mando Corporation Ixan Plant, and a hydroelectric power plant in Cheongsong run by Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power. These companies say businesses should be more responsible for protecting the environment for long-term benefits to our society. Yoon Jung-min, Arirang News. Now, we're going to start our world news in Hong Kong. There have been fresh rallies um, after some violence on the border there. Tens of thousands of protesters, they all got together on Sunday. And what began as a mostly peaceful demonstration ended up in scuffles after nightfall with protesters and police uh, clashing with one another. For more on this and other news from around the world, let's turn to our Hong Yu. So the unrest was initially focused on this controversial but now supposedly dead extradition bill, but the protesters' demands are steadily shifting. Yes, that's right, Mark. Protesters in Hong Kong are now demanding an investigation into police violence during their demonstration and calling for the resignation of their chief executive, Carrie Lam. A large crowd, around 110,000 according to the organizers, assembled near Hong Kong's Sha Tin district on Sunday. The protest was peaceful at first but turned violent when police started dispersing protesters after nightfall. The protesters were chased by riot police in a shopping mall in which they attacked the riot police with umbrellas and plastic bottles. And in return, police fired pepper spray and started arresting people. The more than month-long protest was first sparked by a proposed extradition bill that they feared would allow Chinese authorities to take people for political reasons and undermine Hong Kong's semi-autonomous legal system. But the focus has shifted to Lam's resignation, claiming she failed to address the needs of the people and to complaints that police assaulted participants in earlier demonstrations. We are fighting for democracy, human rights, and and what and freedom yes we cannot accept anymore the hong kong police is not work for hong kong people anymore they are work for the china no we cannot under that we cannot accept that we need to be liberate carrie lam has been hiding she has made many promises but she has not been able to fulfill them there is no sign she is going to fulfill them there were also protests by a group representing Hong Kong journalists, claiming the police have targeted reporters with excessive force. In response, the police said they respect press freedom and the right to report and will train police officers to understand the work of the media. U.S. immigration authorities have started a nationwide sweep to remove around 2,000 undocumented immigrants from the country. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement says the court order rates focus on recent undocumented arrivals with priority on apprehending violent criminals and aggravated felons. ICE conducted raids in 2016 during Obama administration, arresting 10 percent of illegal immigrants. As of early Sunday evening, there weren't many confirmed reports of undocumented migrants being apprehended, suggesting the raid is progressing slowly. In an epic men's Wimbledon final on Sunday, world number one Novak Djokovic captured his fifth Wimbledon title and his second in a row with the thrilling victory over eight-time champ Roger Federer. In the match that lasted nearly five hours, the 32-year-old Serbian outdueled Federer over five sets, with the final set ending in 13-12-3 in favor of Djokovic. The latest victory was also the third major championship match that Djokovic saved two match points to defeat the Swiss legend. With the historic victory, Djokovic is now the proud holder of 16 Grand Slam titles.
Time now for our Life and Info segment where we focus on information that should be useful for your everyday life. And if you are a foreign resident living in Korea for a long time, you will want to pay uh, particularly close attention to this next story because it has been revealed that non-Korean residents here in South Korea who default on national health insurance fees will be required to pay for all their medical costs out of their own pocket. Now, under changes made to the National Health Insurance Act, which will take effect from July 16th, foreigners staying in the country for more than six months must sign up for the public health insurance plan. Those who do not enroll or who fail to pay the premiums will be required to cover 100% of their own medical bills while they're in Korea. Foreign nationals will pay a minimum 96 US dollars a month with the exact amount to be determined according to income and assets. The rule will be temporarily waived for students and skilled training visa holders, but they too will be required to pay from March 2021. Now, a study has found the number of hospital visits for low blood pressure rises 1.1% for every one degree Celsius increase in daily average temperature. The Seoul National University College of Medicine confirmed the correlation through its study of more than 130,000 appointments for hypotension and changes in heat. Researchers say it's the first study to reveal that one of the reasons behind the increased number of deaths due to cardiovascular disease is because of a rise in the occurrence of low blood pressure. They add it is best to avoid heat exposure when the summer is in full swing. Now, South Korea's heavily congested roads frustrate drivers and uh, they waste uh, drivers a lot of time and fuel in the process. So to help the increasingly chronic problem here in South Korea, local researchers have developed an AI system that can predict traffic conditions. Park Se-young with more. Cars and buses line the busy streets of Seoul. Sitting in a traffic jam is not only frustrating. It's also linked with a number of health problems, stress, and greater exposure to pollution. In the hope of easing traffic flow, Korean researchers have developed an artificial intelligence system that predicts traffic conditions in the next 5 to 15 minutes. Unlike previous systems that rely on probability and statistics, this new system uses a deep learning algorithm that considers real-time traffic situations. It learned three months of traffic information, like historical average speeds in certain areas, the congested parts of roads nearby, and traffic during rush hour. It can predict conditions for the next 15 minutes at an error rate of less than 4 kilometers an hour. It can tell with 78 percent accuracy whether roads will be congested. Congestion levels and average driving speeds predicted by the system are visualized using colors and shapes for easy understanding. The researchers plan to share the visualized data on the Urban Traffic Information Center website, and the system can also be used by broadcasters and navigation units to find the best route when traffic gets bad. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Good morning. We'll all need an umbrella on our way out. The capital and Chungcheong Namdo province will see rain in the morning, while most inner regions will see spread showers in the afternoon, and they could linger into tomorrow with 5 to 70 millimeters in store. Meanwhile, western regions are seeing poor visibility this morning due to mix of dust and fog. And what's worse, toxic dust from overseas will blow in this afternoon, boosting fine dust levels to bad in the west. So let's check the levels frequently today. A warm and humid afternoon is in store, and daily highs will be a couple notches lower for here in the capital, getting up to 29 degrees Celsius, while Daegu and Gwangju should be warmer, with highs going up to 31 degrees Celsius this afternoon. 
In Seoul, we'll also see readings jumping to the 30s again starting tomorrow, but lows will be below 25 degrees, meaning we'll at least get good night's rest without too much tossing and turning. That's Korea for you, and here's the international weather for viewers around the world. Well, that's all we have for now on this Monday morning here in Seoul. Stay tuned to Arirang TV. And a reminder that our next newscast is coming up at noon Korea time with our very own Lee ji -yoon. So until then, goodbye. From Arirang Radio, this is Good Morning Seoul. Arirang. Arirang. You're listening to Music Action. What's up? We also got a lot of fun things coming for you later on. What's up, guys? Benji! Benji. Uh, uh, what are we doing here? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the one and only Arirang Radio, a brand new studio! Oh wow, this is so awesome. This is so hot. Can I do my show here too? Yes. Amazing, right? I wonder what else is happening. Hey Sam, what are you doing up there? Check this out. One, two, three, four. Now, not only can you listen to your favorite artists, but you can also see them. So you can see me here, 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 and here. Oh, I should definitely start working on my outfits now. Where's my tint? Where's my tint? BRB, I'm getting a face.